Komodo dragons are the largest lizards in the world, growing up to 10 feet long and weighing up to 150 pounds. These lizards are renowned the world over for their formidable presence. It was once thought that their saliva was so toxic from all the bacteria living in their mouths that victims died from sepsis after a single bite. It has now been discovered that the Komodo dragon releases venom from glands in its mouth. This acts as an anticoagulant and causes excessive blood loss in their victims. They can attack and consume prey much larger than themselves, tearing flesh from a carcass or swallowing the animal whole. They are largely solitary lizards, but come together for mating and sometimes feeding. There is a hierarchy at feeding sites, and scuffles sometimes break out. They use their incredibly muscly and powerful tails to support them on their hind legs as they rise up to wrestle one another or reach elevated food. Komodo dragons are found on the islands within Komodo National Park, Indonesia. These consist of the Lesser Sundas and include Rentja, Padar, Floors, and Komodo Island. But could they survive in North America? To answer this question, let's look into some of the things required for these animals to survive and thrive. We can consider the habitat and climate in North America, as well as the prey species available to them, and any threats such as those from predators or human activity. Firstly, Habitat and Climate On their native Indonesian islands, Komodo dragons occupy hot, dry places. They prefer open grasslands, savannas, and tropical rainforests. Being cold-blooded, like all reptiles, Komodo dragons rely on the sun's heat for movement, metabolism, and digestion. Usually, after feeding on a large meal, Komodo dragons will find a hot, sunny spot to lie in. This speeds up digestion, which is essential when they've eaten up to 80% of their body weight in one go. Undigested food can spoil inside the dragon, causing severe illness or death. In North America, the state with a climate most similar to the Indonesian islands is Florida. With a tropical climate in its southern regions and an average annual temperature of 71.5 degrees Fahrenheit, Florida could provide the right sort of weather for Komodo dragons to survive. The average annual rainfall in Florida is about 54 inches, whilst on Komodo Island, it is just over 60 inches. Komodo dragons drink water from water holes, especially after a large meal. In order to help with digestion, they get most of their moisture from their food. The Florida Dry Prairie is a treeless expanse of grasslands that extends throughout the subtropical zone in Florida South. It is comparable to some of the open grasslands and savannas found on the islands of Komodo National Park. Komodo dragons also need soft ground to dig burrows and nests. The sandy soils of Florida's dry prairie may enable the dragons to dig easily. The burrows they dig in the soil are usually between 3 and 10 feet wide. They provide shelter and are used by the lizards to sleep in and conserve body heat. The nests that the female Komodo dragons dig are camouflaged to avoid predation. She sometimes lays her eggs in the nests of some ground-dwelling birds, covering them in soil and foliage to keep them warm and moist. She can lay up to 20 eggs at a time. The young hatch seven to eight months later and spend most of their time in trees to avoid predation. Komodo dragons are such expert diggers that they've been known to dig up human bodies from shallow graves. Locals now only bury their dead in clay soils and with a pile of rocks over the grave to prevent the dragons from digging them up. Now, let's consider prey. Komodo dragons are ambush predators. They frequently set up ambush sites that are cleared of vegetation and marked with their droppings. When prey, such as a deer, approaches, the Komodo will suddenly run or launch itself at it. They can reach speeds of up to 12 miles per hour and are capable of leaping up to 15 feet forwards. When hunting, they aim to bite the underside or throat of the animal. Contrary to popular belief, Komodos aim to kill most of their prey instantly rather than waiting for the venomous saliva to do the work. However, injured prey does sometimes succumb to infection caused by bite wounds. Komodo dragons have poor vision and poor hearing but their exceptional sense of smell helps them to detect carrion up to six miles away. 
They constantly flick their tongue in and out of their mouths and sway their heads from side to side in the characteristic gait they are famed for. Like all lizards, Komodo dragons possess Jacob's organ, which is an olfactory organ situated in the nasal cavity. It is used to analyze scent molecules collected on the lizard's tongue and pointed in the direction of potential prey. Prey species include invertebrates, other reptiles, birds, eggs, and mammals such as monkeys, wild boars, goats, pigs, deer, horses, and water buffalo. Young Komodos will also eat insects and small mammals such as rodents. Komodo dragons are also big carrion eaters, homing in on dead carcasses from miles away. If feeding on large animals, Komodo dragons can survive on just 12 meals a year. In North America, there would be plenty of prey species that are similar to those favored by Komodo dragons in their natural habitats. Deer are abundant across North America. In Indonesia, Sunda Sambar deer are the Komodo's favorite prey. They typically weigh between 100 and 250 pounds and stand 30 to 40 inches at the shoulder. This is comparable to America's mule deer. Even America's abundant white-tailed deer could be considered within the Komodo dragon's size range for deer kills. North American deer species that are considerably larger than the dragon's usual include elk, moose, and caribou. However, Komodo dragons do take down huge water buffalo, relying on their venom and deep bite wounds to eventually kill the animal from blood loss and infection. If they occupied similar habitats to these large deer species in North America, then they could certainly be on their menu. Rodents would provide food for Komodo dragons throughout America. Small rodents such as mice, rats, and voles are found in abundance, and larger rodents like marmots, woodchucks, and beavers are also found throughout North America. Wild hogs, like those found in Indonesia, are in all counties of Florida the state we consider most favorable for its climate and habitat. These animals could all be considered prey for the dragons if they were to inhabit the states. Finally, let's look at threats to Komodo dragons. Komodo dragons are apex predators in their natural habitat. Apart from fights between conspecifics, they are rarely attacked by other animals. Their skin is incredibly tough. It is covered in small bone-like structures called osteoderms, which act like natural chain mail for defense. The biggest threats to Komodo dragons are the destruction of their habitat and climate change. Ongoing human activities destroy Komodo habitats, and they are now considered endangered by the IUCN. Furthermore, as global temperatures and sea levels continue to rise, their habitat is likely to decrease by at least 30% over the next 45 years. Florida, which we believe to be suitable habitat for dragons, is also at risk from rising sea levels, and its wildlife is in danger from invasive species, climate change, loss of habitat, urbanization, and pollution. In conclusion, we believe that Komodo dragons could survive in North America. We have suggested Florida because of the similarities of its climate, habitat, and prey to Komodo National Park in Indonesia with its grassland prairies, surrounding woodland, and biodiverse everglades. Florida is also home to the abundant wildlife that Komodo dragons could hunt. But there are other states that deliver more of the same. Hawaii, Louisiana, and Texas are some of the hottest states. The Great Plains running down the center of North America offer open grasslands, and Texas has the highest population of white-tailed deer in North America. Although Komodo dragons don't actively hunt humans, there are reports of attacks on locals which have proven fatal. Having the largest lizard in the world roaming around the United States may be an awesome sight, but it may also be the last thing you see. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time.